Hello, hi, welcome everybody to our first session uh, of this new campaign. We're Average Roll, we're a bunch of Chilean gamers who love uh, to play and to share our experiences with you, our dear audience. My name is Elena, I'll be your DM for today. And today we start our long awaited, <laughs> long delayed uh, Dragonlance campaign of high tier 11th level characters. Uh, uh, you already know these people, I hope, I assume, otherwise you can see their names uh, beneath their portraits. Uh, we'll start right away into the action, and then they'll be able to introduce themselves, you know, uh, they'll be able to tell you about their characters and who they are, and we're super excited, and I really, really hope um, they have a nice time. So, the world of Kryn was at peace, or so it seemed. Beneath the veneer of tranquility, a new menace was growing, fed by many mistakes in judgment and fostered by the ambitions and hatred of the losers of the previous war. This black lily finally bloomed in the spring of year 383 after the cataclysm. And so were the Knights of Takesis revealed for all the world to see. It proved to be a thorny flower and quite resistant in fact. The feeble and disorganized attempts to uproot it failed without exception. The voices denouncing its dangers went unheard, and so the dark lily grew and multiplied, until the skulls of its victims were the only thing left in its wake. It is summer now. Ariaka Sariakan, founder and current Grand Master of the Knights of Tekisis, has led his forces in the most successful military campaign in the history of Ancelon. Three quarters of the continent now lie under his iron grip, and the only major opposition left is that of the Knights of Salamnia, the very same knights who imprisoned and educated him, from whom he learned to discipline and how to hide his heart's desire. The last obstacle standing in his way, the ultimate challenge to his dark squint vision of total and absolute domination over mortals. It is only appropriate, most fitting, that the story of the Knights of the Kishis has reached its climax at the same place where it began, the High Clarice Tower, the fortress that has never fallen, the last bastion of protection of Palanthas, jewel of Senamnia, and beacon of light and last hope of the world. If the tower falls, there won't be any mortal force left capable of stopping Lord Ariakas and his knights from taking over. If the tower falls, Victory by strength of arms is no longer a possibility. If the tower falls, Palanthas and the rest of the whole world are next. So, it is Homeswolf 18th, the sixth month of the year. This is by, I'm using the names in the Salamnic Reckoning. Um, I'm going to put it in chat right now. Homes, Homeswolf, um, 18th, 383 after the Cataclysm, or Al Cataclysm in the old language. It's three days before the summer solstice. You're traveling as fast as you can, looking to find the last spark of hope before Anselm runs out of time. You're all aboard their skyship Moon Chaser of gnomish construction and design, surfing high among the cloudless skies when suddenly a mist envelops the ship. Captain! cries Chaffy, uh, Zafi Copperpatch, a young female gnome that's the moon chaser engineer and main helms person. There's something very wrong with this fog, she says warily. Before you can say or do anything, a lightning illuminates the sky with its piercing blue brilliance. No thunder follow it, follows it, though. Instead, a booming voice declares, for all of you to hear. Return from whence you came, if you value your lives. These lands and skies are now under the rule of the Knights of Takisis. If you move forward, prepare to meet your death. Then you can see the origin of the voice and the lightning. A long, bright blue serpentine body emerges from the mist, its wings maintaining the creature's altitude by mightily flapping his wings in unison. On top of it, there's a humanoid creature wearing black metal armor from head to toe. Even from afar, you can see the design of lilies. 
The Dragon Rider, however, is not alone. Two others of their kind join at their side, each riding a blue dragon of their own. It's time to roll initiative. I'm gonna move this in the map. Are you kidding me? We're starting Ooh. with a battle? Tier three. Oh. Nope. Hell yeah, let's go. Oh, okay. okay. This, this, this is a good map. This is Beautiful. a good map. Yeah, it's, uh, we're gonna leave all the resources in the description. I think it's this is from Che, che and Peku. Uh, I and Ooh. I can't see the map. We're, we're way at the bottom. Like, yep. scroll down. It's no, no, no. Here. The, uh, the, the camera map. Uh, Elena. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I'm gonna. Sorry, I'm gonna give it uh, right away. I'm gonna. Oh, sorry, I forgot that I need to uh, <laughs> give you give it permission to see all of your characters. Okay. So very quickly, I forgot. I forgot that was the thing. Um, so yeah, you're high above the sky, and then uh, virtual. Now you should be able to see and okay, so I see. see all of it. Yeah. Let me uh, center these. I'm gonna adding more and more stuff. So Oh, this is exciting. Okay. Mm -hmm. So also this ship is huge. Yep. It's huge. It's four hundred feet long and a hundred feet wide. And it's like a ship in the sky, like <sighs> with 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 uh, wings sort of, you know, made of sails. Plus, it has like a, an engine made out of some kind of crystal imbued with magic. It's a beautiful thing of gnomish design. And Zafi, he, well, well, she was the one that restored it. She's at the helm at this moment. Um, mm -hmm. She's here. Haldroth, I imagine you're by her <laughs> side because, you know, well, uh, mm -hmm. that's, that's what you're supposed to be doing as the captain. And then, you know, the rest of you. So... Let me uh, check my so and and you can see like the this is where the dragons are with the, the dragon riders. Three blue dragons and riders atop of them. One of each of the order of these knights: a knight of the lily leading, a knight of the a knight of the thorn, and a knight of the skull as well flanking at each of her sides. Oh, yeah. the, the main writer is, a, is seems to be a female writer. Um, in the Night of the Thorn. So, let's uh, go. Gonna... I think we have to uh, update my initiative because I rolled okay. a 14. <coughs> okay, I'm going to update it right away. So, let me check for the Night of the Lily first. Um, oh. Okay, so that's 13. Okay. Let's go for Knight of the Thor, Knight of the Skull first. No, I'm going to say, yeah, Knight of the Skull, and this is, um, okay, that's, that's pretty decent. And the Knight of the Thorn last. So, uh, the dragons will act in the turn of the riders. Mm -hmm. uh, this is oh, great. For initiative. Uh, okay, so... Keras, you're going first. You are in the, you are in the in the main deck. Uh, uh, at your side is a young uh, male. You've known him. This is um, Haldrat's um, squire. His name is Ulrich. He's here, uh, and he looks terrified, of course, as the rest of you. Um, I don't think you are, but uh, he's terrified. I don't think he has ever seen a dragon in his life before. Uh, so yeah. Okay. Um... What are you gonna do? Choosing Elena, can you show the turn order again, please? You close oh, it. sure. Sorry, yeah. That's about it. Yeah. Okay, no, let, let me put it there. And can you see it there? Can you yes, see it now? I can mm -hmm. okay, cool. see it, and I'm just resizing it. Okay. Because our characters have played many times before, yeah. you will yep. know that with a group of enemies grouped together as they are, mm -hmm. there is one thing that Jonah will do as soon as it happens. He's going to throw a fireball in there. So both of you know that that's what of he's going to do unless something changes before he gets to act. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, sure. So let me see what I can do because, again, it's the first time that we use these characters. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that's true. We'll see. Sorry, sorry, I wasn't... While you do that, <clears throat> I, I, I'm still saying the map, top quality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Thank you. It has the lower level as well. When you have, by the way, your um, experimental battery of cannons of Gnomish design. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which you can order someone, they act, they act once each turn. On your turn, you can um, just give the order with just verbal voice, and you have um, crew enough that they, for now at least, that they'll um, uh, they'll fire. they'll fire. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, if they have it, they they are on the sides of the ship, of course. Uh, mm -hmm. the starboard and uh, the other one. You always forget. <laughs> I, for uh, I, I, port, I, I yeah. forgot that I have a, that's that that stuff. <laughs> okay. Um, what are you gonna do, Keras? Sorry, 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 sorry. Okay. There's not very much that I can do now, I think. So I'm going to look at uh, Aldrich and say, "Get off the the oh, how do the name of this part of the ships? Uh, the deck, the main deck. deck. Mm -hmm. Get out of the main deck. Return to to the inside." And he looks at you and says, I, I, I'm sorry, sir, but I'm a knight. I need to fight. I need to stand my ground. Only my leech can let me go. And even then, he would be going against my honor. I have my honor to protect and to defend in this case. And he like pulls out one of his, a sword, like a long sword. He's dressed, you know, like a like a squire. He's super young, by the way. Uh, like 10 years old or something. Do what you want and run in front. Mm -hmm. uh, like you cannot uh, help but but she he reminds you a little bit of 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 your sister. Yeah. So I won't, I'm walking 25, 30 feet there, and okay. Yeah, I think I finished my turn there. I won't do anything else. Okay. No ready action. Re no. I don't dodge. Have... Yeah, that could be an option. Trying to avoid. I'm just saying. Yeah, you're right. I'm going to use my action to dash and do it. Hold on. You can use your bonus action to dash as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another option. I have a question. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I wasn't it's thinking okay. this is going to happen this. Steady. I, I, I kind of let you know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, in the current uh, turn. Yeah, okay. Now, uh, how much movement do I have? Yep, I'm be here. With, um, with my action. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sure. So you are now almost at the prow of the, of the ship, and you can see, like, the dragons here look small, by the way, but they are not. Like, they are huge. They are large creatures. You know, you can see their wings uh, open mm -hmm. up, spanning. And the dragons, both the dragons and the riders, seems all of them are dressed in in full plate armor. Uh, they're wearing masks over, over like, a, a helm with a mask over their faces, and they seem mm -hmm. to be ready for anything. We are not scared of you. Interesting. Okay. Actually, the the knight that is in on uh, top of the the one that spoke before, uh, she says, hmm. "My name is Lady Loris a Sky Master, Talon Captain and Knight of the Lily. Are you challenging me to a duel?" I'm looking behind myself uh, <laughs> to the rest of the party. Yep. Smile and say, perhaps. Okay. Now, we're going to see what, what she does in your turn. Okay, Jonah, your turn. So that is one of the few things that could change what Jonah was going to do. <laughs> yep. <laughs> because, so, uh, Jonah will take a couple of steps forward. Yep. And uh, put one hand to the, the prayer beads of Paladine and draw it, and as light comes forth from the, the symbol of Paladine, it creates a fireball that he holds in his hand, much like he does be, behind me, <laughs> uh, and he'll say, the skies do not belong to you. We still defend them. Uh, and I'm going to hold my action to throw a fireball. If this doesn't, like, if this doesn't become a one-on-one -on -one duel, yep. 
I'm blasting them. I'm blasting all of them. Sure. Do you say that? Like, yeah. if this is not, this is not you. Okay. Uh, and that, and now it is, it is the night of the, the night of the skulls. Um, so if, yeah, if I, if they don't seem to be like waiting to let one of them go face one of us in one-on-one -on -one duel, the yep. fireball goes off. Sure. Uh, let me check. Uh, none of this help actually. So I think that, um, the knight of the, the knight of the skull looks at, uh, at her leader, but he's at their, um, their leader in this case. Um, and, and she says, uh, oh, actually the knight of the skull is, um, he says, my name is Sir Balserius Fox Seeker. I'm a knight of the skull. Is anybody else in this ship that wants to have a duel? Anybody else has honor? Minotaurs, by the way, for the audience and maybe for you a little bit, Minotaurs are well known because of their, they're really honorable and they go into duels and stuff. So that's why uh, the Lady Loris immediately like caught you up and was like, oh, sure. You want to you wanna go into a duel? I'm up for it. Anybody sells anything to uh, Can, I, Cyrus? can yeah. I respond even? Sure. Yes. We're talking. Talking is a free action. You can do, use it any turn. If you want to stop us, Ariagas himself has to come and try it. If you want a duel, come and die. Do I recognize the sound of a knight? A Solamnia here, says the voice that comes from the, the skull. Actually, it looks like a skull. Um, and the dragon f flies by um, with the... Wh you are where you are, you're here. So I think in this case... Uh, no, no, I want this one, these two. Okay. So the dragon flies by and... Um, He's gonna let the knight jump. He falls in front of you and uh, he takes off his helmet and you see a beautiful face, uh, long almond eyes, um, very nice fe facial features, like very delicate. And you see the two pointed ears and you see an, um, in this case, an elf. And the elf immediately gets... Um, like a mace out of out of his side and he um is going to attack you or in a duel so it's gonna make you two mall attacks against you so that's one and that's two uh so i have a 22 and a nine the 22 hits okay so he hits you and as soon as he, as he hits you you can see the mace turns into like a uh, like a, a a light but it is it is an unlight it is a night that comes from the darkness and the light hits you and you hit you receive 13 points of bludgeoning damage and seven points of radiant damage um, for a total of 20 20 yeah uh and the second strike you you're able to block with the sword uh, and then the knight says holy takaisis burn this infidel and and he's summoning the so you need to make a wisdom saving throw dc 15 all right that's my worst save but oh i'm sorry but worst i'm a paladin plus eight i love yeah. paladins <laughs> how much of that oh that's a nice 22 so 22. nice you see the same light appear in front of your eyes but you're able to i don't know do you pray to any god do you believe in any god mm, i have no no prayers no prayers okay, sure for the time so but you wear the rose of the knight of the rose the ones dedicated mm -hmm. to Valentine. so you reach for your inner strength and all of a sudden like the light is not so blinding you're able to shut your eyes just in time and you receive um 
only uh, eight points of, um, in this case, of radiant damage, and you are not blinded, uh, which is awesome. And that was the turn of the night. Now it is your turn. Okay. Uh, I'm. You're circling to... each other. He's like wearing a mall and uh, and play the thing, and that's yeah, that's about it. Play it um, on one hand, and then on the other side, he has like a five-headed dragon symbol that he he's like you know ha- is like um collar around around his neck, but he's like grabbing it with one hand, and the mm-hmm. other hand is with the mall. I'm going to shout to Elena. What do you say, Elena? You are in charge. Take care of the people inside. Elena um, unsheathed his sword, salutes you, says, as you command, my liege. And she turns around and she says, anybody who is not a fighter, back into the back into the lower deck. And you can see actually Sarah and Odo were like, oh shit, there. And they start immediately uh, running towards like the, the ship's cabin, which is this one here. This huge, like, um, here. Mm-hmm. And they're running to get inside behind the doors. Um, and I think on a couple of the crew are also, they are expecting you. And Helena says, what are your orders for the crew? My lord. Fuck. That's a good <laughs> question. Uh, Fire at will. <laughs> yeah, at, 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 your, at your stations. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to finish uh, putting my helmet. I'm going to yeah. salute with yes. my great sword. Helena sh- shouts, brave crew of the moon chaser to your battle stations, man the guns. And you can see people running and these ones, they go down in this, use this thing. They open up the doors and they go into the lower deck immediately to the battle stations. Um, mm-hmm. And actually I'm going to resolve this one immediately. They go ahead and to the side, they have a dragon. So they're gonna shoot at the dragon. Uh, they're gonna uh-huh. shoot. Uh, yeah, the one that actually had uh, Seer um, Seer Balsaros. I'll say Ross. Um, I don't know copy if that these. breaks the rules of the duel. But um, not really. The dragon is uh, not in the duel. <laughs> so <laughs> good to know. Lady Loris, and now we had. Uh, although it is like poor sportsmanship, if I say so mm-hmm. myself. <laughs> if, if it is, okay. if, if poor sportsmanship. No, don't don't shoot. Yeah. No, no. I I think th- it's a dragon. It's a freaking dragon, and you need to get rid of it one way or another. I think you no, know they well, definitely okay. see it that way. Um, it's like it's like shooting at a plane. You know, I, this plane is sentient though, but uh, mm-hmm. more actually yeah, sapient. Uh, but look. Um, so let me check the the stats for this. So because this is only experimental, it's only one shot. But if it hits, it's kind of kind of tough. Um, so can you, would you like to roll yourself? Uh, no, uh, okay. go for it. I'm going to roll for it then. It's a plus six mm-hmm. and it's a 17. I think that hits a dragon. Depends Unless on what kind of dragon. Yeah. No. It seems like, uh, adult, young, I don't know. Uh, they look young, young, mm-hmm. young adults. Um, sadly, the dragon is like, just, you see like the battle station, sh- sh- Actually, the ship shooks with all the strength of the cannons fighting, and you see a couple of them go towards the dragon, and the dragon very, very like uh, dex- dexterously, like flies around and hovers a little bit and avoids, uh, sadly, the the all, all mm-hmm. of the cannon bolts uh, thrown. Um, what is this? Is dragon? Um, this dragon? Let me see. Uh, I think you know a little bit about dragons at, at this point in the story. Um, so, um, which dragon is this one? This mm-hmm. is, I think this is a, this is a, um, this is a, a male, a female, sorry, a female dragon. Mm-hmm. Uh, and actually the, the knight in front of you turns around and says, um, we shot him out And like the, the dragon turns says, don't worry about me. Defeat this poor excuse of a knight. Uh, and now it is now it is your turn. Sorry. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, Finish. Yeah. Put in my helmet. Salute yep. with my great sword. Awesome. And I'm gonna point. And I'm gonna use my uh, channel divinity, because okay. this is a duel. This is a duel. 
Yeah. yeah. So I'm using how is named? Uh, Both of vengeance. Bo no, bow of enmity. Ah, yeah. Bow of enmity. Okay. What it does? Uh, I have advantage on all my everything. Like everything. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Awesome. Like, I loved it. I point at him, and yep. then I'm going to just spinning with my great sword, a big swing diagonally. Awesome. Um, and okay. I'm gonna use the uh, well, how, how is it called? A uh, great weapon master. So okay, I'm minus five myself. plus ten. Yeah. yeah. Sure. While you're doing that, uh, get us. Uh, so because we've been fighting together for a long time <clears throat> with these dragons, it's not a good idea to bunch close together or to make lines. But if we are going to be bunching together, we want to be within ten feet of the paladin. To get the bonus from the aura. Got yeah. it. So, uh, either I... very far apart or within 10 feet. 19. <laughs> Good to know. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> A 24 hits. Yeah, for sure. No, he took no, minus 19. five. So 19. Oh, I think. true. We're not 19. Uh, that's okay. Yeah, a 19 hits as well. So I'm going to. Uh, Holy add up shit! Plus so much damage. This damage, and yep. I'm gonna pop uh, a smite. See, sounds sounds good. A level two. Okay, smart. sure. So twenty, and a level two smite. For divine smite. So that's a three D roll. Three mm -hmm. D eight. Yep. So, so that's twenty one plus thirteen. So mm -hmm. that's 34? Uh, yeah, 32, 34. Mm -hmm. And there's another one. I'm going to attack again. Sure. Advantage, yeah. great weapon master. Uh, that hit. <laughs> yes, yeah. It was, that's, this is a 28. Whoa. So um, in two hits, You've taken this knight from full health to bloody it mm -hmm. and under it. You're like, what? The, Two strikes. The, the, first, the first swing is, is like a wide. I turn myself to gain sure. momentum and strike diagonally. And then I'm going to jump over him using my my flight speed. Awesome. To uh, get on the other side. So whatever he throws. Sure. can't hit my allies and Excellent. then i'm going to just come straight out with a great sword so the first one he tried to parry with the with the mob but your strength was just too much and you're like putting everything into it and your sword shines and you're like ah oh, and you hit him on the side and then the second one he's like waiting for you he said he's an elf he's very dexterous but then you jump overhead it's like oh no and he's about to turn around but you're like super quick and you fall like with the hit and he falls to like you break the helmet and the helmet falls to the ground um the one that he was like wearing on his hand uh and and sorry not, not the helmet the, the uh, shoulder pad uh you break one of the shoulder pads and he's like on one knee and you can see like blood pouring uh from him like very quickly uh and the dragon it is now the dragon's turn to say balls balls and and he's like he raises a hand like a uh with with a, a fist with an iron gauntlet like stopping her from doing anything and he like spits blood on the ground and raises up again to face you uh that was okay now it is the turn of the night you challenged so keras i mean so this night oh great this night actually says uh turns around and says to the mound Central. If you detect any shenanigans, burn this, this to the ground. Even if I'm on board of it. And she jumps like from from the dragon, runs runs and runs here, and then she jumps ahead and like in the middle of the attack unsheaths um uh, a great sword. And then she's gonna strike you three times with a great sword. Okay. Uh, so that's one great sword attack, another great sword attack, and another great sword attack. 
So, uh, I have an 11, or I think that misses. Misses. Uh, uh, a Keras 20. For... No. Hold on. Keras nope. uh, will uh, evade that... Uh, that uh, Initial that, that strike, that yeah. Very, very easily. The second one, a 20. She turns around, and she uses, like... you. She failed so much that she turns, like, the sword around, and instead of trying to hit you with the blade, she tries to hit you, like, with the, with the guard. So she goes like with the guard and the blade, grabbing one side of the blade against your throat. 20 to hit. Okay, uh, my AC is 17, but uh, mm -hmm. while I was uh, evading, I'm going to move my, my hand, say a word, and cast chill. Holy shit, awesome. <clears throat> then, then her like shield and, and, and like uh, the, your shield, your magical shield, it doesn't look any different, like from any regular old shield, magical mm. shield made out of force. Yes, uh, this shield is like is. You will see in this kind of magic in more um, obscure uh, magic practitioners. Sure. Awesome. It's more so, like the, the shield is maybe maybe like shadowy in shadowy. a way, like not so clear. And then you know, like the the blade of the sword plus her gauntlet hit against it. And like, I right, hit back, and then she tries something in which she raises, like using the momentum, both hands on the great sword against the shield and lets it down. But your shield is too good. And like, boom! Like the the sword once again hits against the shadowy shield and goes back. She failed her three attacks against you, and I think that's awesome. And that's going to be her the end of her turn. Now it is the night. Of the, um, the Knight of the Thorn. Uh, mm -hmm. So the Knight of the Thorn starts looking around and says, I don't imagine we're lucky enough to have someone else here that would like a challenge. Sure. Uh, I'll motion at him like with the fireball that I'm holding, like to move aside from, from there, from the allies. So like, him and I can go on, on one on one. I love it. All of you are like acting like knights. Awesome. So she says, "Oh, Jonah was happy to blow them up, but it was like, <laughs> oh, we can just fight the people, not the dragons. Great. Yeah. So uh, she says, Stoneforge, uh, bring me there. Uh, uh. And then the dragon flies with them and they get to the side. And actually, the knight jumps. And this knight is a little bit short. Um, and actually, uh, he says, I am Sim Sir Ar Amdan Moltenheart. And like, uh, he salutes you. And it actually, uh, like, doesn't appear to be like uh, having any weapons on them. But what they do is like they grab. Uh, like they pull out a wand of sorts, like a short wand, and then they say a couple of magic words which you don't understand, and they th three like uh, bolts of grayish, uh, purplish light fire at you. So if I see that, I release the yep. fireball at him. <laughs> at oh, okay, cool. Uh, I, was, I was going to do something else if it was an attack. But it's yep. magic missile, so my thing yep. doesn't work. Meaning, boom. It's uh, not magic missile, by the way. You've seen magic missile. This is not okay. If this is an attack roll, then yep. I will do something else. No, it's it's not a uh, it's an attack roll. Yeah, there is an so attack roll here. Then the the fire in in the hand changes, and it yep. creates a blinding flash of light. I'll use my warding flare. Sure. Uh, and they have disadvantage on the attack roll. Okay, and all <laughs> of them, or only on the first one? Uh, it, it looks like it's only the the first one. Okay. So, sure. So... While I am attacked by a creature that can be blinded, I can yep. use it. Yeah, just once. Okay, so... But that I'm seems gonna... fairer than blowing, than setting a fireball at the dragon. Because also <laughs> then I'll be fighting a dragon and... That uh, is true. ...a wizard knight, so... Yeah. And by the way, you probably have seen magic before in your life a lot. This is a very strange kind of magic. As you've heard a little bit about the Knights of the Thorn, that they are supposedly heretics that draw magic from the three moons instead mm -hmm. of one, like usual wizards in on Kren. Um 
So, okay, the first one with a disadvantage is a 13 to hit. Nope. That misses, I think. Okay. And then the second and third one, these are going to go like regular thing. So it is um, this one and then this one. Um, so, nope. I have a 12 and a 14, a rolling super nope. low. Um, so these three lights go against you. The first one, you're able to like raise your, I imagine your holy symbol. No, no, oh, this was the, the fireball that he oh, was the fireball. holding in sure. his hand turned to just a flash of blinding light. Like the knight um, lets that one go away against you uh, and it goes like a little bit away and the other two are also affected by this and they go wide and explode in the air without any anything. And like Safi, by the way, you didn't give any orders, Aldrath, like to stop. So Safi's like, screw this shit, I'm gonna keep on going. And she's like at the helm, like trying to keep on going. I said um, that if they if they want to stop us, Ariakas yep. himself has to come. So yeah, you yeah. said that, yeah. So okay. So I think this dragon then, which is the dragon from from uh Lady Loris, uh this one sees what's coming, and then he's like, no 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 no. Um, and like f flies a little bit back, but maintaining distance um, in the situation as well. So this was your autumn, I'm done. And I think now it is, uh, it's the end of the turn. So now it is um, your turn again, Keras. What are you going to do? Hey, you seem uh, like an honorable fighter. My turn to... Uh, to repay you the favor, um, well, I'm, I'm speaking. I, I'm preparing my my attack bonus action to the aim, and okay. do an attack sure. uh, with advantage uh, with my dagger of venom. Okay, sure. Eighteen. Venom without defect, only the, the attack. Okay. So fifteen, so... and I roll again. You get to roll again. Advantage. Oh, cool. Steady aim. Oh, awesome. Yeah. 21. So, 21. 21 hits. Okay. For sure. So it's a regular damage. So, a couple of quit hits, and the knight is able to avoid one, and then the other one is like, oh, shit. Like, you hit her on the side, and, like, the poison is now... Uh, no, it's so... not poison. It's not poison. I didn't have activated the... You didn't? No. I okay. Must have, must have done that in my last turn. I, it's one action to to do it. I'm, I'll let you. Like in retrospect, you you could have gone to where you were with your bonus action dash. Yeah. Okay. And use your so, action to prep the exactly the venom. So sure, awesome. Thank you. Come on, your time to shine. My time to <laughs> do your shit. <laughs> my time to shine. So the attack, normal attack, will be. Uh, I'm oh, looking here. Eight oh. points of piercing damage, ten points of poison, DC fifteen constitution save to the gate, and twenty points of sneak attack. Nice. Wow. So she's going to roll the the saving throw. That's uh, you said con, con yeah, 15. fifteen constitution. Con fifteen. And she roll a seventeen. So makes sense. The you can you hit the dagger and the dagger like starts dripping its venom. Like quit hits. She's able to avoid a couple of them and then you hit her like shit and like. She's able like to try to move away, and you can see like the venom dropping, but the cut was deep. So I will. This is twenty-eight in total. I will flourish, flourish my my dagger. <laughs> and, and she looks at you like surprised as uh, venom uh, is is the weapon of we of the weak and the uh, treacherous. Never seen one of your kind fighting so dirty before. You are a disgrace to Minotaurs. Um Get us is angry. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sure. Uh anything else on your turn, Keras? You spend I think your bonus, bonus action to steady aim. My action, uh, I think yeah. and you cannot move because you need steady aim. So, so I think hold, he's done. Uh, let's let me see something. Sure. Take a look at that. That's all I can. 5, 10, 15. No, 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 no. I have something that I can, I can do else. Because oh, I sure. use my. 
my sneak attack. Sure. Let me, the, let me. Your your phantoms. Yes. That's to another target. Another target. Just I say, have. That, yep. The one that's, that's just saying. Mm, and everyone is uh is in a duel. Everyone's no, in, in a duel. No, I'm no. not yeah. gonna do anything else. Okay, sure. You you so, can break the duel and say yeah, target. sure. Yeah, Fuck it, yeah. but mm, I, I, mean, you, I I know you, you, you are not knight. Yeah, but I know someone that will be angry with me if I do that. You hear a voice in your... You, you see um, the black skin horned figure of Aranetta and, and she's like, Do it! What are you waiting for? Screw the duel! If you say so, I, I say that in <laughs> to no okay, one in now, particular. Now Keros is like talking to the air. Yeah. Like, there's no one there. It's like talking to someone on the side. If you say so, okay. Put my hand Another in voice me. comes in and says... Uh, it's like a, a, another female voice, like, you know, um, black uh, color, uh, hair that was once black, uh, streaks of gray everywhere, um, two bright eyes, and she says, um, I don't know, it could be worse. It could... It could maybe the dragons would get angry here. Uh... And yet another voice is like, uh, come on, come on, come on. You're gonna do it, it will look so cool. Um, there's like a brown, uh, long hair, bearded, uh, bearded voice Next in your head. Next time, uh, keep, uh, and keep And now the three voices are talking at the same <laughs> time. And I, I, I start to discussing with them instead of doing sure. anything. Okay, awesome. So now Karen is having like a four-way discussion yeah, uh, with the air. Jonah, it's your turn. So now I'm in a duel, apparently. Apparently, uh, sorry. Uh, I should be there. Yeah. Oh, oh no. Up to you, because that oh, changes things. Check. No, no, no. I think yeah. it's going to be like that. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. So I'll see that, and I will step forward. Uh, okay. This is Sir Amden Moltenhart, I believe. Yep. They are a dwarf, by the way. Yeah, uh, I'll take a couple of steps forward. Sure. Uh, and Jonah will say, Your goddess was sent away once. She shall be gone again. Uh, and I will create a fourth level spiritual weapon. Ooh, uh, cool. Oh, sorry, we didn't discuss this. It's all right. For what now, it, like? it can just be uh, a, a lance uh, of, of silver light. Okay, that appears uh, 17 to hit. It's kind of lame, actually. Uh, you like like a lance. Uh, this is like this. We're gonna use this like just as a. Perfect. I'm gonna use and give you control of this. So the 17 hit. I think it probably doesn't. No, no. Yeah. You, well, where do you put it? Move it around. You should be able to. No? Uh, uh, right next to me, as if I was wielding it in my hand, and as I sure. do that. Uh, with my action, I'll use Sacred Flame, and I need a 19 Dexterity saving throw. Ooh. Okay, so this knight is like, uh, you throw the lance made out of light, and the knight is like, you know, raises a hand, pronounces a word in like in the language of magic or something, and then the lance basically is met by a, a shield made of darkness <laughs> that absorbs the light and makes it go away. And then you now... Um, by yeah. throwing that, and you see, you see now the knight grabbing has like a one in one hand, and then with the other hand grabs this, uh, a symbol very similar to the other one. This is like another five-headed dragon symbol, mm -hmm. and she and they start like saying words, mumbling words uh, in dwarvish. I don't know if you speak dwarvish, um, uh, but it's know. a prayer. Yeah, it's a prayer. Uh, it looks like it sounds like one. So, so that is um, dexterity what do you say? save DC nineteen. Sure. Oh, that's hard. That's freaking hard. I have the prayer beads of Paladine. Yeah, how much was that? Uh, that's a 14. That's a miss. So a burst of light comes through the lance and goes through the shield and hits them for oh. 48 damage because I have blessed strikes. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, yeah, 19 uh, radiant damage. Oof. Like, uh, and as you said, you know, the light pierces through. Oh, and, and they receive like the, the herd. 
and they say a word in in dwarvish that I won't translate because like a dirty word. Mm -hmm. Um, so but they curse you in a way. <laughs> Anything else? Uh, no. Jonah? Movement action turn? bonus action. Awesome. Now it is it is actually uh Sir Balseros' turn. And this elf knight is going now. Um, the first thing he's gonna do is gonna touch the um, his holy symbol, and he's gonna mutter a prayer. Um, do you speak um, something that I know? But I'm sorry, I'm asking. Do you speak um, elvish? Yes. Um, so he's calling on the queen of darkness, like using the elvish name, and like it's a prayer on the queen, like queen grant me protection. Uh, from my enemies and yours. And actually, um, they're going to get, uh, they're going to recover some. And you see, like, some of their wounds mend a little bit. So, oh, well, that was okay ish. Um, so, some of their wounds mend. Uh, they're still. He very was hurt. looking bloody, right? Yeah, it's still bloody, uh, I think. No, now now it's no longer bloody. I think because of this. Um, and now once again, he's gonna go like on the offensive, but he's gonna start with um, they're gonna start with a another prayer, and once again, uh, a a nun light shines in your eyes, trying to blind you. So, roll a DC fifteen wisdom saving throw. Ooh, excellent! So once again, only eight points of, of radiant damage. Eight um, points. Yeah, eight points could have been much worse. And now you can see a little bit of frustration in the elf's face, although it's very hard to, to maybe read. Um, and then he goes with them all, two attacks against you very quick, in quick succession, like one up to the other. So this is gonna be... 19 AC. Yeah, it's gonna go one and then another. Uh, 17 misses the first one misses you and then on the back swing it's a 23. that so that hits you and do you you don't care about the type of damage yeah you don't have any resistances uh, so 18 think. points of damage and once again this unlight uh touches you and you feel like it's it it uh, it it touches when it touches you it's a searing touch it burns your skin uh and yeah that was two attacks plus that. And I think that's the end of the turn for the night. Um, yeah, let's use the bonus action for that. So now it is your turn. What are you going to do? I'm going to, just for flavor, I'm going to, after the, the, these attacks, I'm going yep. to hit uh, his mouth. So he raised his guard. Oh, cool. And sure. then I'm going, that's my hunter's mark. Like I'm fighting you. For oh, now. excellent. Love it. Sure. And then, once again, one big swing. Yep. My great sword uh, with advantage. My, minus five. So, uh, 19. 19. Just I think. hits. Just hits. Yeah. So, awesome. uh, 2d6. That's a 19. 29 29 points of damage a huge and like you hit him in the in the face and then you know wow cut uh, 32 because of the 32 mark. yeah because the hunter's mark yeah and now they look beaten like wow you hit him with a the, the cut and they take a couple of steps and you see like you when you where you cut with your sword like n what followed was like a slash of like blood on the on the floor of the deck uh, their blood, of course. Okay. What is, so explain this to me. Yep. What is the politics or etiquette of a Is Jew? it the first blood to the death? No, it's no. To the this death. is to the death. No, these are mm -hmm. like... Uh, these knights don't fight for honor like in trivial okay. manner. When they challenge you, it's to the death. To the pain, for those who mm -hmm. get the difference. <laughs> you fought... Uh, um, you fought uh, well and brave, Sir Balserius. I want solely your honor asking for surrender. And then I'm going to take my, yeah, sure. my next attack. He's Hold looking it. up to you. Yep. 
all the bells and whistles. An 18. That just oh. hits him. That, that, that's the AC of plate armor. So yeah, that hits him. That's a plus 10, plus a roll. 26. D6, and I'm gonna pump a, a smite so sure. I can I already so that use. Was 26, 31. I'm gonna use a level 3 because I said that I'm acknowledging his armor. So roll 2, 3, 4, 48. How do you want to do this? Great. Uh, first swing, like diagonally on the chest. Next swing is just a thrust. And I'm going to come no. real close. <laughs> pull it out and let it fall. The knight falls to his knees and then the dragon roars. And he's about to attack you and with the with his last bit of strength he raises a hand and says no and then he falls death to the floor of the of the deck i'm gonna stand there and look at the dragon Roar! the dragon is roaring like spewing lightning into the sky but she's not yeah. going she's not going to go against uh, his last wish all right and then, then i'm gonna wait to mm -hmm. the resolution of the next duel. Awesome. <coughs> so when Lady Loris is, 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 no! And you can see like she likes trying to stop herself and she says, you will pay for this. And she like goes against you. Uh, three great sword attacks. Oh. Um, so it is like one through two and three. Come on. Oh no. Oh, not 20. Chill. Sorry. It's not going to be enough. It's Fuck. always going to hit you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, you know what? The next attack was a net one. So I think it evens out. <laughs> um, but the first one was with all the, I, 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 I was two into uh, Lady Loris. She was like, no, and she like strikes you. It's a huge hit. This is, um, yeah, because this is a, like, yeah, like a, like a pretty awesome hit. So this is 24 plus 16. This is uh, 40 points of damage. How much? 40. 40. Four, oh, yeah. Four, you can oh. use your reaction to have uh, it. Yeah, and can you that? You're able, like, how, how do you, how, how how does this look in the fiction? Please let me know. This was like a deadly blow against you. Yeah. Um, Kiros is, ha is hungry, so he. Yeah, you said that he was angry. Yeah. He's ha he's hungry, so. Hungry. Hungry. Yeah. Hungry. Yeah. Hungry. <laughs> angry. Yeah. He's angry. No. He's not <laughs> hungry angry. and angry. <laughs> Angry, angry and angry. 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 Yeah. <laughs> That's how I get when I don't eat, you know. Okay. So hey, he he's he's not uh, paying much attention, just sure. move a, move away. Receive the 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 hit, but trying to not react so much. Okay. Her next she's like frustrated that you that you took like only half of the damage. She's like you're cowards, that's why you all deserve to die! Honorless cowards! And she turns like the great sword around and you're like avoid it with like without any any effort. And then she uses the momentum, grabs the sword, and brings it back against you with a 27 to hit. And that's going to be 28 points of damage against you. I can do uncanny dodge again, right? No. 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 Uh, no. How much? What are you at? 28. Uh, Twenty-eight. Yeah. I'm, I'm at forty-nine. All right. I'm fine. Yeah. That was a lot of that. Oh, but, but and it's, it's updating. Scary. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's the idea. Uh, so she's like, 
You're going to die a coward's death. That's what is going to happen. I will honor my friend with your death. Yeah, yeah. Um. <laughs> so now it is the Knight of the Thorns turn. And he's like, oh, shit, I, I'm loving this. Uh, like loving like the heat um, in this case. Of, um... By the way, I had not considered how Jonah was going to fight one-on-one -on -one duels. He's kind of built yep. for the opposite. But I just came up with a couple of possibilities depending on how serious this turn is. Like, sure. Uh, how serious I Jonah think... has to take yep. oh, the opponent. Elena, by the way, I'm, yep. I made a mistake with the with the dagger. I have a plus one in my damage too. It's base. Mm -hmm. I didn't. So I need to add plus one. Just a plus one. It, it should be reflected on the I added it. Button. Yeah. It yeah. was in the in the roll in the roll in the roll twenty it shows. If you go shows? back, look at your attack, it shows it said It says, oh, no, it says 28, 28, 10, and twenty. Yeah. There's a plus one on top of every plus there. one. Okay, sure. Let, let me let no, no. me. It would have been on the eight. Uh oh, plus one then one D four plus six. No, it's correct. It's correct. Yep. Ah, your plus other plus dagger is one D four plus five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because so the damage is five. there or wasn't? It is. It, it, is. it is. Okay, sure. Yeah. Unle yeah. On the dagger oh. of venom. Un unless on you have um, six. It's a plus six. two or yeah. Modifier. No. Okay, okay, okay. Six plus His six. character doesn't do drugs. He, he does <laughs> shadows. Be. It's six plus six. Yeah. Because oh, it's, okay. it's a plus one to it's damage. It's okay. It's okay. Okay. It's applied. Sorry, Elena. Yeah. No, don't worry. It's okay. First we're, time we're, playing again, this. We're learning. Yeah, first time with this character. I have a question now. Rule, rules question. Um, can an enemy use the space of a spiritual weapon, or is yep. that not allowed? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's not, not a not creature. Object, so it's not a you know objective. It's not a creature. Sure. So this knight is gonna turn in this way. Is gonna be on on where, the space where now the spiritual weapon is. He's like maneuvering around you. And then he says, yeah, he was if he's the going to bit. do a line attack to include Haldrath, I'm going to get very angry. He says, but go for it. he was the only elf I ever loved. And she's going to, he's going to let, they're going to let out a lightning bolt. Um, and yeah, you read it, you read it perfectly. Like this was, mm -hmm. uh, and it's kind of, it's 40 feet across. No, sorry, how much is Lightning Bolt? It's 100 feet long. Yeah, no, it's huge. So yeah. It's like 100 feet. So, But it's, it's only going to go, only gonna hit Haldroth. So mm -hmm. you and Haldroth both need to um, make a dexterity yes. saving throw. Yeah, I fail with 12. Okay. So um, it was too close. It was very difficult mm -hmm. to move around about this. Uh, and you, Haldroth, you succeeded. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Um so I think, yeah, because Ready. the Knight of the Thorn, was it like, how much? Yes, 15 was the difficulty. So okay. you take 23 points of damage, Yona, and you, Haldra, <laughs> take 12. And when you see Jonah, what is happening, it looks like he says, I guess I'm sorry. Uh, oh. He's no longer in a duel, though. Yeah. Um, and that was the, the Knight of the Thorn's turn. Unless I am forgetting something, I don't think I am. It, it's done. So now it is uh, Keras's turn. But I think at this point, we're going to go back in time a little bit. We're going to leave this here. And we're going to go back in time. So. Oh, sorry, went into the wrong map <laughs> uh, because I want to. I want to use the map. Uh, mm -hmm. This beautiful, wonderful map. Uh, so we're gonna teleport ourselves to Sunchrist Isle. Oh, sorry, and to here to Castle Uthwiston on the shores of the Whitestone Glade. Where you know, Aldrath, that knighthood was created. This was the place where the three gods, Paladine, Kyrgyzlith, and Habakkuk, appeared in front of Venus Alamnus 
thousands of years ago and show they all showed him the vision of a new knighthood that would protect humanity against and the rest of mortals against all their dreaded things in the world um this castle is old old and forgotten and you're looking it is early morning you're looking out of the um, out of out of one of the one of one of its windows and you can see on the other side of the of the glade and the river here you can see your your skyship the moon chaser on the ground safi and the rest are enjoying the crew are enjoying like a picnic day sort of uh you arrived here last night for a very important moment um there's going to be a nightly council and not any type of council a nightly war council it is Holmesworth 11th this was a week ago um and the place where you're in when you turn around it's a huge huge room like like kind of uh, these you know university style room like these go like, like um you're on the one of the top sides of it and you can see rows and rows filled with knights that have come from many places in the world travel very far to come here um and yeah uh they have all come for this console uh in that moment and there's by the way there's like these rows of like benches and everything and then they go back into like a daze of sorts and in the days there's like a desk and the banners of all the great houses starting with house alumnus on the middle and they house mark Kennan, and house bright blade house the kaela and all of the great houses of the knights all of these banners light the room in a way the morning light filters through the windows and gives the this proceedings on this place sort of gloomy like brilliance to them in the desk there are five um five chairs the one in the middle has like a like a tall very tall back um and the rest of them are like s smaller and in that moment you see the first one you've been waiting for a while now uh for the for the high ranking officers of the knights of Salamnia to come in and start this thing uh knights are are known to start early so the first one you see come in is Sassarain Quintain Fogerner, uh, current high warrior, leader of the Order of the Crown. And, um, sorry, I see, um, he enters, he's probably the youngest uh, of the high ranking officers. Uh, he's known to be a man of few words, but of loud actions. He's been a very good uh, knight uh, throughout his life, uh, I, he's like the embodiment of of the Order of the Crown, the measure of the Crown, to serve. Um, a little bit after him comes a familiar figure to those uh, those of you who know about the knighthood. This is Lady Meredith Turningdale, and she is um, she is the the High Clerist. She's the leader um, uh, of the Order of the Sword. Uh, she's like a woman in her early 40s, uh, a veteran knight, uh, bright, still bright blood hair, shining eyes, and she looks around, dressed, by the way, all of the knights are dressed in full regalia, all of the things, you know, the breastplates and the, and the swords at their side, they're dressed for war. And in this case, it's not, it's not just, you know, adornment. This is like the real knights, um, the way they're dressing, they're dressing for war for real. And last... Out of these three comes Sir Liam Erling. And he you know a lot because he's the leader uh, of the Knights of the Rose. He's a strong yard man, very, um, very determined, uh, really likes to think things through. Um, it's not very like... Um, so very well, he, his plans are well, well thought out and all of that. And at last you see what is in a way um, the pride of knighthood. An elderly man, still, you know, strong in his, in his last days, probably. Oh, 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 uh, oh sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. 
it's okay. I made yeah, a, I, and you I reminded a mistake. of the first time you saw him and like in your memories, he's still proud and strong. Here's Lord Gunther of Weston, Grand Maester of the Knights of Salamnia for for now 30 years. Um, but he's still strong and he enters the room and all the knights, by the way, are already waiting like on the, at his side. Um, the Sassarain is like on one side, on the, on the left side. Well, from the way you're looking at it, is uh is the is the left side and on the right side there are now the two chairs are being used uh the one closest to the center is being used by uh sir liam and the one a little bit after that is used by uh lady um lady meredith and the one to the left on the other side is used by uh Cesarine, um quintain and then you see an image that really surprises you here, which is the last chair it apparently is waiting for him. And you see Lord Reinfried Greystone, retired knight of Solamnia, and your father. And he enters after the Lord, the, the Lord of the Knights, the Grain Maester. And if Gunther is still strong in his old age, your father is like someone that is every step you can see the effort on his face to get there. But all the rest of the knights honor him by not pointing out his weakness. And then he gets after a long while, he gets to his chair. And then all of the knights go silent. Or Gunther steps into his place. He was waiting for to Reinfried to go in on his left side after uh, Sazerain Quintain, and then Lord Gunther. <clears throat> and then all the voices, there are a lot of rumors going around. People were like still like a little bit of chit chat, and then all the rumors just die. There's silence. And one of the knights starts playing a lute. And you know this song. Uh, and they start playing it little by little. And I'm going to leave it here so you can actually follow along. And this is an old Solamnic song. Solaro Zumado I saw you singing along. Did yeah. you sing the song? Mm -hmm. All of the knights sing along the song of Uma. And then... On, on, on a whisper. Sure. Your your father sung like it was like the national yeah. anthem, like, you know, yeah. screaming his lungs into it with his voice, you know, weak by old age, but still, you know, and all the knights here, like you can see some of them like get really teary. Actually, Elena is by your side. And she's like teary-eyed a little bit. And Ulrich is like, 
surprised by how the nights all of a sudden turn into a chorus of voices so well everybody was so well um in tune and they knew they were singing from their hearts all of the song and then her gunther says please uh, sit down knights and then um the proceedings start so um the proceedings basically there's a lot of pomp and circumstance of course you know a lot of bureaucracy in a way um a lot of it is about giving you an update on the state of the war mostly of what i've already told you about the situation in palanza the situation in the high clarice tower and the main discussion is about what to do now uh basically there are two opinions one which is led by uh, Lady Meredith and supported in a way by your father when he's asked to, to speak up, is to move as many troops as possible to the, to the tower, to the High Clarice Tower, to the fortress, and to defend it to the last night, if necessary. And on the other hand, Lord Liam and Cesarin Quintain they advocate for a more, let's say, a more maybe subtle approach, a more like conservative approach. And they said, you know, that it's best to try to to defend your own castles, maybe try to look for forces outside of Solamnia now. Um, and Lord Gunthar is, well, High Lord Gunthar is mostly silent throughout the discussion. Would you like to, by the way, a couple of knights, of course, you know, raise their hands say their name, the station, and then they offer their own, you know, ideas, supporting one side or the other. But mostly the, all of those who have spoken, and you can see some some nodding their heads and all that, mostly 50-50 at this point. Like, no one is really, there's not like a, a majority. Would you like to say anything in this situation? What we are doing right now, in the present, it was uh, an idea from Jonah, right? Yeah, you're trying, and in the in the present, it's like in a week, in a week, you will be atop the moon chaser, trying to find a hope up beyond the strength can, of arms. Can I request sure. a further flashback? Yep, a reunion with Jonah and Keras. With sure. us, you want to have a scene talking. right now? Yes. Just yeah. Awesome. Work. So this would be. Um, the day before, the mm -hmm. night before the, the events that I we just started our adventure with. So it's going to be Korich, for those of you who follow the conventions of Ergoth, which is almost everybody who is not like Salamnic or Dwarves or Elves or Kander or Goblin. Um, that would be Korich 17th, uh, 383. And for the Salamnics in the house, <laughs> it's Holmes Wells. Um, by the way, this is what I'm about to, to hit um about to hit the summer solstice but this summer has been particularly cold summer has not been what you were expected to and where would you meet uh i think jonah is is has a permanent house in the temple of paladine in palanthas mm -hmm. um and i think definitely our friend keras mm -hmm. would have uh his ship on the um, on the ports obviously so we're now moving in the map i'm gonna teleport us in the map to palanthas the jewel of the north so this is palanthas and in the bay of ranchala is where you would have your ship the labyrinth that would be an option to talk about in the and the, at the ship's cabin mm -hmm. you could talk about um, aboard the moon chaser on the on the <clears throat> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, on the, you know, the on the cabin um or the temple where would you like to have this conversation where do you prefer, guys? Yeah. If you want to meet uh, with us, yeah, uh, you I, choose. Could, I could request uh, that we we need to reunite. To I think it would it would happen on the on the moon chaser. Yeah, your your ship. Okay, so in that case, um, it's a matter of of office or even like a war room where you have yeah. a map of the world like this. The yeah. ship's cabin is huge in the Moon Chaser. So you have space enough for all three of you to be sitting there. 
in that situation, would you allow Elena to be with you and Ulrich, or would you send them away for this conversation? No, I I allow Elena, no Ulrich. Okay. So Ulrich is doing like his chores, and the I imagine the ship is like on on Palantas on a side or outside of Palantas. Where would you put it? Where would you land it? Near near Palantas. Sure. So Some... they, they don't have to. Yeah. Travel. <laughs> Awesome. So there's the three of you, plus Elena. Elena is like, of course, you know, as a as a knight and a squire, you you've known her. She's she's quiet unless she's spoken to. She's very well mannered. Um, I want to show you a picture of her so you get to know her a little bit better. So um, she's very determined. Uh, she's also a half elf as well. So, um, but she hides uh, her her long ears beneath her. Her short hair, um, and, and Ulrich, as I said, you know, before Ulrich is just a boy, so Ulrich, um, Ulrich would leave you, and then go to about his shores to do his shores. So, what do you do? What do you make of the situation? It is dire. The knights advance. It is faster than the dragon armies of the past. Their discipline, their tactics. They clearly prepared for this assault. And we did not. I believe they will be stopped at the High Clarice Tower. It has never fallen, but I am troubled. The knights are going to meet up. To coordinate the defense. Yeah. They didn't, they couldn't stop the Knights of Takesis before. If you ask me, I don't think the defense of the High Clarice Tower is going to make a difference. What did you, did you suggest? That we just leave it? I came to you. Because at the end of the day, you are my friends. And I trust your judgment. I have been praying for guidance. The knights, they are divinely inspired, united behind their deities. We are not. We lack the guidance. <laughs> Have the you... light grants me miracles, yet... There is only silence. The gods do not fight with us. They fight through us, but... During the War of the Lands, when... when Takesis was set to invade our land, Paladine was here. He guided people here. He. Where is he? Where is Kirijolith? Where is Habakkuk? Fen and I, we have been researching. Perhaps. I do not know, but if the Knights of Takisis, if they planned for this. Perhaps they planned something else as well. Some way to block the good gods of the world to help us. I'm gonna look at Keras. What do you think? Honestly, I don't know what to think. This sounds hard. This sounds sound hard. These are hard times. Yes. If you know that if you need information or finding people, you can count in me and mine. My resources are available for any one of you. 
I believe hey, we will. You should do it yourself, says a voice. And you see like a brownish, like almost like red hair, beard, like a smile on his face. Says, come on, guy, you have the labyrinth. You need to invest some gold, though. Yeah, I know that hurts the, the, the bottom, but you could ask around in a week. You could get very reliable information. That was, I was telling them we can use we all resources and I can help them with that. Don't interrupt me when I'm speaking with my friends. Do we hear this conversation or yeah. just yeah. Just once? You, yeah. you hear only one side of the conversation. We, all, we hear Keras, but I think we know. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it speaks. At this point. And like you you see like Anerada, Anerada is about to like speak up. And she's like not so round, like let's have like a like a hissing, like a bull-like hissing um, <laughs> through her mouth. And then uh, the druid is like, and she does this, mm. this sign and like, she. Your help would be appreciated. In the past, there are tales of the gods walking among us. They take familiar guises. An old warrior, uh, a bumbling wizard. Perhaps we could search for these people, if there have been any sightings. Yes. Yes, we can. We can ask some favors, I think. Thank you. Do you agree, Belgium? Who did you ask? Belgium, the guy yeah. who my, my... spoke up earlier. <laughs> Belgium's like... was like, you know... I'm not supposed to speak, so... <sighs> he says yes. Do you have a lead? Did I find a... Did I, Fen and I... Did we find something? Or not yet? No. You actually have... You have two leads in a way. Mm -hmm. There are two people who know probably enough about this that could help you. One is very close and easy to get to, uh, in your case, which is Lady Crisania. Mm -hmm. uh, she stays at, uh, at her family's house in Palantas. And the other one is Dalamar, Argent, head of the head of the mm -hmm. head of the Black Robes and master of the Wizards Conclave. Yeah, who supposedly dwells at the Tower of Palantas, surrounded by a grove that no person, no mortal person can go through because it basically it instills the fear of death in your heart. Mm -hmm. Dalamar is hard to reach, but Dalamar is also now the master of the tower and head of the conclave. Do the wizards know anything? And Lady Crisania, she went to the abyss and back, mm -hmm. literally. Yeah. It caused her, her eyes, her sight, <laughs> She's a very wise woman. Many still call her revered daughter of Paladine, mm -hmm. even though you now have that title. You are the revered son of Paladine at this at this juncture. Would I would I know how to send a message to Dalamar? I like could Fen handle getting a message Fen, to them? Fen Fen has a has like a very as Fen does a very mm -hmm. weird theory. Fen says, you, you know that a year ago, Justarius, head of the Red Robes, died in an mm -hmm. attack that the wizards coordinated against Storm's Keep, the island where the Knights of the Kaisis, the mm -hmm. Kaisis, sorry, supposedly started. And Justarius has a daughter called Jenna. Mm -hmm. And Jenna is super young, like 25 or something. But Jenna is now the head of the Red Robes. So there, Fen discovered a rumor that Jenna is supposedly in a relationship with Dalamar, and that's why uh, she ascended so quickly. Of course, you know, that's your hearsay. Mm -hmm. uh, but Jenna is much more readily available. She has a shop, like a magic shop in Palantas. Mm -hmm. So you could go there if you wanted to. Yeah, so would it be better for uh, Jonah to go or for Fen to go and, like, try to get a letter? No. 
No, gonna, like okay. Fen says, you need to go there. Like, sure. she's gonna, she's not gonna, she's gonna, mm-hmm. don't even look at me. She says. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, there are two people who might know. The lady Chrysania, she. If Paladine has not answered my prayers, perhaps he has answered hers. But if it's, if this was foul play, if this was another attack by the knights, perhaps Dalamar might know. I hesitate to reach out to, to a wizard of his reputation, but needs must in these times. Don't tell me you are a scared. I am not scared, but I would not trust him under any other circumstances. Hmm. It's wise. For all I know, the gods have abandoned us. Disappointed that we didn't see this coming. But I am not a man of faith. You are. And I believe in you. If you can see me in the eyes and tell me that you are sure of this, tomorrow I will speak on favor of searching the gods. This was a lot easier when our enemy was expected to do anything to get victory. Mm-hmm. Now that they act with honor, it's difficult to take the moral high ground. If the High Clarice Tower will fall, as you think, the gods are our only hope. Get that lead. Get concrete information. We are going to look for the gods then. I will make sure of that. You have my word. You know, if you need company, you can count with me. Thank you. Just okay. Me. Just so I think mm-hmm. I misunderstood a little bit what you asked, uh, Alejandro, regarding this. So I think it should be like a week. Be- this is before the council, yeah, the nightly council. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You wanted, yeah. So in that case, I think this is going to be, um, for like a week ago because the journey, even on, on the moon chaser, is going to take you like a week from yeah. Belanthus to get to... Don't, don't worry, don't worry. Sure. So it was, was a week ago. So yeah. now you get a week. Both mm-hmm. you, um, Keras, and you, Jonah, get a week to do your thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So would you like for us to turn back to the World, World Council, Aldrath, or would I, should I go with the with these two gentlemen first? Uh, I don't know if, if they want to roleplay that or yeah. just came back with the... No, I'm, I'm going to give them a scenes regarding <laughs> this. So for sure. <laughs> then it's up to them. Okay. I think finish your scene. We are yeah. we are in your moment now. Okay, so okay. people, don't get confused. We're gonna we're gonna go <laughs> forward in time. Yeah. Then but you know, it's still in the past. It's still in mm-hmm. the past, but forward in time. Yeah. So, so you're now the high council, the and basically the the knights are once again having the discussion. Like someone is saying, uh, we need to land as many troops as possible. That's what we need. We need to fight them. A storm bribery once did. We need to turn on the tower and fight all against them. Who's with me? Hey, hey, hey. And a lot of them, you know, shout and cry, you know. Helena's by your side, like waiting, looking at you every once in a while, glancing at you, like trying to see what you're about to say. What what is your your opinion on this? I'm going to reach over I say, under my armor and sure. grab my ring that has the signet of the Arch Knight my rank in my order. My brothers and sisters, 
Everybody's like shouting around. And then, you know, Elena stands up and says, Silence! Oh no, it's Night Speaks! And now the night's fall silent and she's like, My brothers and sisters, Grandmaster, Haldrad uh, Grimblood, Archknight of the Knights of the Rose. Today is a day of tragedy. Today we fail to uphold the gift of a storm bright blade. That gift that 30 years ago in the High Clerics Tower, he restored our honor and gave us Solamnia and Salon to protect. And we failed to do it. Now the people in Palanthas are afraid. And you only recourse is to scatter around and manage to make a defense or throw yourself at the Cle Cle High Clerist Tower and suicide with honor, knowing that your death means the fall of Palanthas. I know of great authority that the gods, the gods of good, are being impeded to act in our behalf. We fail to call Sir Storm honor, but we can still try to save this. I'm offering myself and my knights under my church to go and find Paladine Kirigioli and the others so we can fight the Knights of the Kisses. Roll persuasion with advantage. <laughs> that was a good speech. <laughs> you, you, you got this. Like, you got this. I uh, love the Knights of the Lion. Uh, you got this. You're a knight. Uh, uh, I don't need the advantage. <laughs> you don't need the advantage. Oh. Yeah, it was such a good speech. Not 20, That's... by the way, for those at home. For a total uh, of 29. 29. For a total of 29. Incredible. Wow. No. This is the thing, though. This is the ugly part of it. Some knights, I'd say like a few of them, uh, especially the young ones, especially those that are not full-blooded humans, look at you and they're like about to clap. That you can see like the faith in their eyes and how moved they are by your speech. But the rest of them, there are many reasons why, why they just answer your call with silence, except for one other one. In that moment, Hylor Gunther stands up from his chair, and every knight in the room follows suit. <clears throat> Enough has been said today. And I will do two things, three, I think, with this. These are my orders to you now, my brethren. First, do as your heart tells you. Some of you crave for battle, crave for glory. Do seek what you must. Some of you, and he looks at Liam by his side. More reasonably, perhaps, are thinking about the, the good of the people. 
go ahead and do so. Protect the innocent. Go and give them shelter in your castles if you can. Don't let anyone suffer in needlessly. And some of you, and he looks at you, and you can see like the hint of a smile on his face. Some of you are looking for other answers outside of the box. You have my leave and my blessing. May you be successful when others have failed. May you bring the gods again to our side and help us defeat this great evil. And of course, you know, everybody started like, you know, rumors, hey, what's up? You know, that that's not... <clears throat> My second decree today is that I hereby declare that I retire as Grand Master of the Order. I've done enough for you. And never is like shouting. And like, he raises a hand and most of them fall silent. I need to do my own search. And this, the direst of moments in my long life. And my third decree, kneel, Sir Liam. And he unsheathes his sword for Gunther and says, I hereby named you Lord Liam Erling. And he points like flat point the blade on one shoulder and on the other. Hereby declare you, Grim Master of the Knights of Solamnia. All hail, Lord Liam! Hail, Lord Liam! Everybody like shouts, and Lord Liam stands up. You do me a great honor, sir. I try to serve you and my brethren as best as I can. You are dismissed. And I like you know every there's going to be probably another concert now but the orders have been left of course you know liam says whoever wants to stay behind and have a conversation and everybody and everybody's like pouring out of the place uh and yeah so would you stay here what would you do Aldrith? uh before i leave i will go with uh sir renfrid my father. He was standing up and about to leave. You, of course, you know, you're much faster than he is. Yeah, I'm gonna catch up to him. He what looks are, at you. What are you doing here? Hello, son. It's good to see you as well. I was brought here by invitation. All knights are supposed to come here. And although I'm retired, there seems to be the prevailing wisdom that my ideas and words may be helpful still for the knighthood at large, if not for everybody, of course. When you advocated for the defense of the High Clarice Tower, were you thinking of the people or the glory? He looks at you and his eyes, these cold blue eyes, are piercing you through and through. You tell me. Uh, I want to make an, an insight check. Sure, go ahead. How much was that for the audience at home? 20? 20. That's very good. 20. Um, you see a little bit of both, but definitely it's, it's more like leaning on the side of trying to prove himself <laughs> before the end. I know that you love my sister. Honor her name and he defend the up, people. And he says, I'll do as you should have. I'm going to turn and leave. Awesome. 
and a dork, a dog barks. <laughs> yeah, sure. And... <laughs> no worry. It was like a little bit of disturbing, but it was okay for the scene, I think. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. who wants to go next? Keras or Jonah? Hmm. I think Jonah would, would go talk to Lady Chrysania. Awesome. Then let's go there. Mm -hmm. So, back at Palantas. Lady Chrysania is, as I said, staying on, on, on her family's house. She's the only one. It's, uh, it's one of the... Um, it is, it is in one place, in one side of the... Palantas is basically two cities in a way now. It's the old city and the new city. In the old city, there's a noble's hill, like a lord's hill. And there's where, where most of the nobility lives, and that's where Lady Crisania lives. Mm -hmm. So as you're approaching, uh, you get there. Of course, you know, everybody knows you. So they let you in, they salute you. And actually, one of the handmaids, she tells you... Uh, the, the ladies in the garden, sir. Thank you. And you find her there, dressed in white, a long, plain, plain dress, uh, up until her ankles, walking around in this very cold morning. She's, it's supposed to be summer, but you wouldn't know if it wasn't for the calendar. Um, and you see her walking around with a huge tiger by her side, her ever-present companion these days. And you see a smile, and then the voice comes out of her, and she says, I knew your steps, I knew your steps anyway, my friend. Why have you come here? What can I help you with? And she's beautiful still in her old age. Mm -hmm. The wrinkles on her face, her eyes are now gray, and she turns around. Uh, her her hair once once black, now it's mostly gray and white. And she touches the the tiger, and the tiger like roars a little bit, like growls a little bit, and goes away. My lady, I am troubled. Please, please sit down. Let's sit down. Let's have a conversation like we used to do. What is it, dear Jonah? The assault has been relentless and... I have prayed for guidance. I have prayed for visions, for... for a way to prevent this evil from overtaking the land. My prayers still grant miracles, but I... I cannot see. I do not know how to stop this. I do not know why Paladine Kirijolith, Habakkuk, why Mishakal, why they are not here with us? Is this not as dire a time as it was 30 years ago? Is this not... Is this not worth their intervention? And if it is, why are they not here? She leans towards you and she says, what you're saying is heresy, you know. <laughs> and she smiles and laughs and says, I'm sorry, couldn't help it. Yes. But you said something interesting. You know that I cannot see now. My... I'm aware. And everybody commiserates me, or most people, I think. And I appreciate the concern, the empathy. But I would say it's otherwise. I'd say that I didn't see before. I didn't see the pain and suffering of my fellow people. I didn't see the evil in front of me. 
and I didn't see how my pride wouldn't let me see. You have spoken well, Jonah. Of course, you know, the gods should be here. It's a huge menace. If a tenth of what they say about these knights is true, we're utterly doomed. So why aren't they here? If it serves any comfort to you, I've been praying to Paladin as well. And he doesn't answer my prayers. Not as he once did. But I don't feel aloofness in his heart, in his presence. I feel him far away, tired, tired and, and suffering in a way. If the gods are not here, I think there must be something greatly standing in their way. And that frightens me more than any nights, any of the tales of these horrible people. Because mortals we can deal with. These nights, even though they seem so dire now, they will once in the future pass away because they are mortals. But something that impedes the gods? How can we fight against such a threat? Our prayers still grant miracles. We have the strength of the gods within us. Yes, but I we think will it's use it. Him dearly. We are their instrument then. We will free them. We will save them so that they can save us. Thank you. I, I had feared that my doubt had caused the the distance, the reluctance I felt, but no. Thank you. She touches, she grabs your hand. She says, My dear Jonah, don't doubt yourself. Not in these times. Trust yourself. Trust what you've seen and what you've done. And walk forward. See beyond appearances. There may be people here that can still help you. Apart from me, of course. <laughs> but other people that have knowledge which I don't possess. Yes. See beyond those lies, those appearances of deceptions. See what is in their hearts. Because that is what is most valuable. Evil and good are not things we are. Is what we do. Thank you, my lady. You're most welcome. And I wish you success. For all of us. For the world. And I think with that, Jonah leaves to try and make contact with... Yeah, first Jenna, then, then Dalamar. Sure. Now convinced, um, it's yeah, it's we have not been abandoned as his friend may have feared. Sure, something is acting against our the gods. So maybe now Keras can take a scene. Yeah, I was gonna think about it about that. Yeah, uh, let's have a, a very short break though. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah like sure. a little break. I really need a break. But thank you, everybody. I hope you're <laughs> enjoying this. Break. <laughs> We're having so much fun, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, been... See you in nothing for us, for you. Uh, a little bit of us, a couple us. of minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you will be seeing the rest of the episode right away. Exactly. We're not stop now. We come back soon. Hi. Welcome back, everybody. It was just a moment for you, a little bit more for us. So, we're back now, and in this case, we are inside a ship's cabin in the Bay of Ranchala, atop the labyrinth. It's a nice, very open, um, very cozy, I'd say, warm um, ship's cabin. You have a desk, your own chair, 
What would you care us? What, what, how would you decorate such a place? What does it have apart from like maps and like, you know, all the instruments you need to navigate the seas? What else? I think that, uh, well, Keras is not wearing his um, his hood, his cape. It's, uh, colgado. Um, he's... Um, okay, he's staying on one yeah. side, like on... on, mm -hmm. on yeah, sure. <clears throat> Maybe he decorates uh, his cabin with some trinkets of past battles. Uh part of the armor of her of his uh, sister in fact he is um looking at uh, anit right now you're looking at, at uh the piece of the armor, armor of, of your of, uh, yeah the of armor her. of your sister of Araneta. Mm -hmm. and as you're looking Araneta. at it um you see her standing there like looking at it the same as you are and she's about to speak up when you're you hear knocking on the door come in uh hi captain sir um then you see um a short uh for audience i think honestly you see a short uh person with like a brown face some um brown eyes as well beard close to the crop um like a fur brow of sorts brilliant eyes and he's like uh hi captain sir uh uh hello bonder um so um i'm here to uh bring you some news sir um go for it okay i'm all ears so you have an ability because we're using strongholds and followers rules so you can gather intel if you want to your establishment is level two so you can spend either 100 gold pieces or 200 gold pieces and then you make a roll to gather intelligence and depending on the result is how much are you going to get okay you can if you spend 100 it's a plus one to the roll if you spend 200 it's two plus two to the roll uh, question this happen yep. this is happening after before in the middle I of think the this is after the conversation you had with Aldrath, like when you decided that you were going to get some information okay. about the whole this whole situation and maybe something that could help you, you know, to find find the gods or find something regarding them. Then get us will spend two hundred. Sure. So spend two hundred gold and now roll uh plus two, a D twenty plus two, and we'll see what comes out of it. Twenty plus two. Yep. Not very good. Six. Mm -hmm. So um. Any luck? Bundar says, uh, "Yeah. Um. Although I don't think they are good news. Uh. uh oh. Can Can I sit down? Sure." And he sits down and he's like, oh, sure. Uh, would you like some rum? I will like some rum. I will like some rum too. Okay. So he pours uh, two glasses and he pours some, some rum for the both of you. And he raises the glass to you like, Cheers. sure, sir. <laughs> so um, this is not, not my kind of rum. Um, so... I just, um, I've been asking around and asking our people to ask around and it seems like everybody's having issues with their gods. But it may be a good piece of news because it's everybody. When I mean everybody, I mean the good guys and the bad guys and the other guys. So it's not a one-sided problem. It's general. Yeah. Nope. Seems to be everybody. Actually, some people say that some of their prayers are not working. Some of the miracles are not happening. And it's across the board. But Jonan say that his praying was working. 
That's weird. Lucky guy, I guess. Huh. Like always. I wish that <laughs> we have that luck that he had. He had. Would come in handy. Eh. So we do what we can. So it's an everyone problem. This god stuff. Yep. And nothing else. You haven't hear anything else. I found something else, but it's not related to the gods. I'm um, giving him another cup of uh, rum. Oh, thank you. Thank you, sir. He drinks back and says, um, I've had it on very good authority that the tower will fall before summer solstice. The High Clearest Tower, I mean. Mm. So for those of you at home, and as a reminder, if you look at the map, this is Palancos, and there's only one road almost like 40 plus miles away that is in between the mountains, which is where the High Clearest Tower is located, which basically blocks any passage over the mountains or, you know, through it. And that's about like 50 miles until Palantis. Uh, this is uh, this is Jose speaking. Um, yep. There is uh, a city near the tower, right? A city? City? The city of Palantis, Not right? Really. No, this Palantis is up here. Yeah. Okay. Well, you are here in Palantis. This is here. And the tower is here. So, but the, the road is actually this one, which I'm describing here, which is okay. like, it is, this one is, this one, which is like here and here. What I'm, I'm what I'm asking is for, um, for innocent people, for, um, maybe some refugees, if that will she be says, a... two and a half hours. Three at most. That's how long it will take for the dragons to arrive here after the tower falls. Well, there is some time to smuggle some some people. What do you think? Can we rescue people? Can we? I don't know. Transport to the in the ship to get sure. somewhere else. Where? I don't have a clue. You, you are the... <laughs> Sorry, looking looking my points. You are my first the mate. The first mate. <laughs> you know the, the seas better than, than me. You and your he brother. He grabs the map. Yeah, he grabs the map and starts like looking around and he says, um, Ergos could be an option. But it's too close. Maybe trusting in the knights, going or the or the gnomes, pray the gods, go here. That would be moving further west. We could do that for sure. Mm. Business about to become really hard here, sir. Yeah, I know. Tell you what, I think that will I will need to accompany. Haldar, hi, never say his name. And Jonan. So sure. you will be in charge of the ship. Take the most can the the most the most can one oh it's common is hard. Take what whatever people you can. Take it away if you can. And I don't know. Do something fun. Sure. Hmm. I'll send you a message where we find the poor. I'll be waiting for them. Sure. 
one more thing. Don't forget to look about fo foxes. Yes, sir. I'll send you an urgent message if I find anything about that. And then he says a curse word in, in Dwarvish. <laughs> um, you've come to know that is one of the harshest way you can defer to someone in, in Dwarvish. Um, don't, don't curse in front of your brother. Sorry, sir. Uh, <laughs> and he's like, and he's like, and he offers you his hand. That's, as always, sir, it's been an honor serving you with you. Safe travel. Okay. Let's go back to Jonah. So, I'm going to say, Jonah, that your, um, let's say that your, um, your enterprise to got you something. Uh, you spoke to John Jenna. She's a very nice person. Well, how did you approach her, by the way? How, what, what was your attitude towards her? She's young, like super young. As I said, you know, she's supposed to be 25, but she doesn't look 25. Probably, okay. honestly. I mean, he's in his mid-30s. So he's, sure. he remembers particularly after the, the, the life of Lady Chrysania, the he knows what it what it can require to suddenly take on a lot of uh power and responsibility sure. so he uh, as much as he needs something from that interaction he probably went in honestly like you are now someone of great responsibility you hold great power this is a dire time we are the people who get things done like this is what it takes like people from completely different spheres of power and influence coming together to try and solve the big problems may i ask why do you come to me sir shouldn't you be looking for the great wizard in this place the one in the black tower if i will i am i believe if I am to obtain an audience with the leader of time, out. he's the leader of the dark of the black rose, right? And the leader of the conclave. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, he, so if I am to attain an audience, I believe I am in the right place. She looks at you with her inquisitive green eyes, like trying to read through you in a way. She says, I like you. I think I'm going to help you. But then you help me, yes? If I need to? I intend to help the entire world. But yes. Should you require awesome. help? I'll come to you uh, as soon as I can. And I'll let you know if I was successful or not. Thank you. Okay. So a couple of days passed. And mm -hmm. then one day in the evening, you see her arrive after you were like, Basically, your late night service or your evening service at the church. Mm. The church is packed, by the way, because people are super, like, it's super cold outside. Sure. And for this time of year, and it's been a rough winter, a kind of rough spring, and they're leaving little by little. She waits until everybody has left, and she enters. She says, um, uh, hello, should I call you brother, reverend, padre, father? How should I call you? Jonah is my name. So, Jonah, I have some good news for you. And she looks around trying to see if there's anybody here. Um, do you have a more private place? You can step into our offices. We Sure. And my office are probably, there's quite a bit of research uh, that Fen and I have been like going through old tomes, trying to find places of significance. Sure. She enters the room and she's like, oh, fascinating. A man of the cloth who also appreciates knowledge? Who 
How the are people you still of this single? land. <laughs> oh. Hmm. It's not something I concern myself with. It is... I lead a driven life. Focusing the, the light, as I do. You all do. She leans forward, and as you're sitting, you're sitting, I imagine, on the, on the desk, and she's mm-hmm. sitting. She goes around the desk, she leans towards you, and she kisses you on your forehead. And you feel a burning sensation in your forehead. I'm sorry, but that was not my kiss to give. It was the kiss of the master of the tower. You can now visit, and Shoikan Grove will not oppose you. Thank you. He's, he expects you whenever you want. He doesn't sleep, you know? And she turns around, and she's about to leave. I think Jonah heads out now. <laughs> it's like... Cool. <laughs> I've been and waiting you for feel this. like the yes. magic of the spell. This is the case of Knight's Guardian spell. And and now, yeah, sure. And you approach, as you approach the tower, you feel the dread in your heart. This like grove that surrounds the black tower, a spire of black obelisk, like black, um, like uh, ebony, ebony tower goes up in the sky and you start feeling a little bit and then, you know, your forehead starts burning again. And then it's like the there's a passage through Mm -hmm. and you can feel the coldness of the undead and other less savory, let's say wards around the tower allow you to pass through. And then you get to the door and as you open it up, you are transported to a place filled with magical objects. Uh, Like there are desks, you know, and, and tables filled with objects and arcane research and everything else. And there is a young male dressed in black robes, trimmed with gold. And he turns around you and says, Welcome, Revere brother. And this is Dalamar. Mm -hmm. Thank you for seeing me. I believe this is one of the rare occasions where our interests align. Rare? Why do you say so? I point to his black robes and go, you have chosen to align yourself with Nuitari. As much as the gods of magic separate themselves, they have separate interests. Were it not for the threat of the knights to the institution you lead, I might expect you to be working with the forces of your deity's mother. And you would be most wrong, let me tell you. Yes, I wear the black robes, and proudly so. But may I remind you but the man who saved the world wore the same robes as I do. My Shalifai, my master. I know well the tale of your master. He did not save the world, but for his own interests. Details. Just details. So That is where the gods are. And in this case, I must say, I have shown a plenty my desire to stop the knights. Yes. I was the only one that survived our attack to Stormski. But I did not survive because of cowardice, may I, let me tell you. Many will tell the tale wearing other robes, which maybe you trust more. And I fought bravely, as everybody else did. Uh, we were confronted with a force that we did not expect. No one did. So, Lady Jenna tells me you have interest in discussing things with me. What can I help you? I believe the gods have been prevented from coming to our aid. 
the significant preparations of the knights for their invasion means they would not have been foolish enough to allow the gods to remain unopposed, to organize and bless our resistance, and their absence has been most felt. Interesting, he says, and he walks towards you, the robes floating in a way. Are you telling me, revered son of Paladine, that the Platinum Dragon no longer speaks to you? He speaks to me, and I kept, and I create light in my hand as sure. I bring light into this, you know, sanctum of darkness. Yeah. <laughs> but I cannot see him. He is not in this land. The warrior oh. does not lead us. Of course he's not. You just need to look at the sky. Mashalafai was the first one to discover this, that the constellations correspond to their whatever the gods are. No, he's not here. But the queen is also not here. And I count that as a blessing. So the rumors are true. Everybody's feeling the absence of the gods. Well, you've been forthcoming. I'll be the same to you. I will pay you that courtesy. We're having issues as well. We're not like you are, of course, because we draw the magic through the moons, but through our will. Mm -hmm. But the moons are our pathway through the chaos, through the untamed magic. And we're all having issues no matter the robe. So it seems like all the gods are not available. How are the Knights of Takisis performing their magics if the moons... Can I make like an intelligence check to figure out like, they seem to be having prayers answered and they sure. seem to be casting magical spells. Sure. Go ahead. I'll allow you Arcana or even Religion if you want to. I'll take Religion. Sure. Does my information get to to Jonan ears before? 17. If you want to, sure. This was a little bit like uh, after what you, what you got the information. So, yeah. Jonah, you would know that According to um, Keras's sources, everybody, all the clerics are having issues. Yeah, that's what I mean. But did that include the clerics in the Knights of Takisis? Yep. No, 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 no. Yeah. That's the thing. So that's a, why. So, mm. how could it be if if Takisis herself is not here because we can still see her stars in the sky? Why are everybody else's clerics, including evil clerics? of the uh, other followers of evil. And it doesn't it doesn't seem that the wizards in the in the Knights of Takisis are having problems. So yeah, so 17 uh, on the religion check. Do you mention any of this to um to Dalamar or do you try yeah, to Yeah, no, it out in yourself? the in this moment he is yeah. like talking things through as he's thinking it out loud, mentioning how how is it that the clerics are not having the problems that uh, the followers of the other gods are? How their wizards are being able to channel the magic as well, and yet, n you know, notably neutral, and even the evil wizards are having problems. With... Well, therein lies the question and the answer. Because you see, I am very sure we all are that these Knights of the Thorn, as they are called, they do not cast magic through the moons. That is just, you know, rumors that they supposedly draw magic from the three moons. That is impossible. The brothers are united. Their dictums were the same when it comes, when it comes to magic. Only one moon 
only one source for those who acquire the robes. No. They are tapping into the magic in the air. This world was created, as many worlds I imagine are, most of them, if not all of them. And to create a world, what would we need it more than magic? There is magic in this world, and he looks around like if he could if he could almost taste it in the air. But we cannot, or we dare not, to tap into it. But these knights do. And there is only one thing which differentiates these knights from other knights in history, or from you or from me. Their blood oath. They swore an oath with all of their heart and their soul into it. And I believe there is power in their oath. And that is why even if their queen cannot help them directly, they still have the power they need. Well, that is certainly troubling, and I appreciate you sharing it. Would their usage of the inherent magic in the world, would it affect your ability to channel through the moons? Do you mean or if is... they're affecting our ability? Yes. No. I don't think so. I think we have here an example of the exception, I'd say, to the law that everything must have one explanation. Yes. I think the problems are different. Our problem with the knights has one source, one origin, but our problem with the gods and magic in general has another. I think at the very least the knights must have known this would happen. They would have not left it up to chance. Either they knew it would occur and waited until the correct moment to launch their invasion, or they knew of a way to cause this separation and made sure to enact it at the opportune moment. Sure. And this this world magic, is this the power that you faced in your assault, the power you did not expect? Yes. It is a magic... But the only way I can describe it is it's chaotic in nature. It goes against the very essence of reality. Hmm. And I don't know. I don't know what they're tampering with. But I fear the effects it could have in reality as a whole. Could you, using your resources, the other towers in the world, could you measure the interference, or perhaps trace when these uh, the, the distance began to occur. Could we establish a pattern? I have been trying to attempt it with the miracles, but I had not attempted to include failures of, of the arcane as well. I could try. Or spread thin as it is, though. I Let cannot me ask imagine you, there is a greater cause. Holy of man, this. why don't you go to the source if you are so interested? Do you know where it is? I will gladly go there. I have prayed to find it. I have an idea of a place. It is rumored. But there was once a great city called God's home, where the gods would walk the earth in ages past, before the cataclysm, before Istar. That city is no more, of course. But there is something in the mountains, in the hidden valleys of Neraka, the land where the knights came first, the place where the temple of Takizis, the remnants, the ruins of it, yes. still stand. 
There is such a valley there. You could try. Rumor tells me that you have extraordinary means of travel. Maybe you could get there in a way that none of us can because magic is not reliable, as I said. Especially the type of, uh, of high-level magic that it would require to transport to such a place. Mm -hmm. But if you can, you could go there and ask the gods themselves if the rumors are true, if the legends are to be believed. I shall. Thank you. You're welcome. You're a brave man, Jonah Clerk. And you're a man, just a mortal man, flesh and blood. The rumors say that you're invincible or somehow immortal, but I see a mortal man before my eyes. I am merely a prism through which light is reflected into the world. We may need your prism before the end, dearly. And I hope that you succeed for all of us. Indeed. Although my robes may bother you, let me assure you that the good of the world is of my utmost priority now, me and the rest of the majors. I'll be sure to give Noitari your regards, should I be lucky enough to reach God's home. I hope that he still likes me. Okay. And I think that's the end of yep. that. Ooh. Back to and the combat. Combat. And I think now we're going to the yes. future because now you know where you're going. You're going to freaking God's home and you have oh. three days to get there. Normally, Aldrath, atop your airship would take you double that. But if you go, you ask your people and they're willing to go double shift, full speed ahead, and you will be there in two days and a half. And in the map... It's already there. I'm going to drag the counter there so you can see it. There is a valley in the middle of Naraka called Godsome. We are now traveling, and that's why your need is so great. That's why you cannot be imposed upon by these knights, and nothing and no one can stop you because you're going to talk to the gods and see why they haven't showed up to this fight yet. And maybe, hopefully, get them to actually join the fight before it is too late. Uh, now, I, now I just, you know, now so that's Naraka. That's Naraka. Yeah. It's, uh, it's here. Mm -hmm. It's right here. <coughs> yep. That's where you're going. That's God's going. Okay. Okay. Let's go right into the combat. Now Woo, it is yep. the present. <laughs> so this is just after the lightning bolt, I believe. Uh, yep. Yep. Get us turn. Yeah. You think it is? Let's yeah. Let me, uh, let me move everything. Yeah, I'm right sorry. Position. You know, right That's right. okay. Yeah. It was very fun interventions. Yeah. But Daniel is getting all the, all the Easter eggs. <laughs> you yeah, got but... to speak to freaking Dalamar. <laughs> mm -hmm. Master of the Conclave, Master of the Black Robes. If you have gone with a with a rope wizard, uh, Alejandro, you probably would have known all of this shit, you know, going around with the mages and all that stuff. All of that good stuff. Let's go back into the combat. So if I die, if I die, <laughs> if I die yeah, sure. Keras, this is your turn now. Still... What are you going to do? Um. Yeah. Okay, Keras is still angry because he was called a coward again. Mm -hmm. Yep. Like every time. So he is not thinking. He will only attack a without advantage, a normal attack. With, sure. with his uh, dagger of venom, he still have the plus one, but not the the poison damage. By the way, yeah. Okay. Twenty-four. The, the sure. Plus one is is added. No, don't, don't worry. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a twenty-four that hits for sure. Okay. I will say to him. Do her. The, her. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. This is Lady Loris. Uh, she's the one. Her, do you know what happened when you mess with the ball? And the damage will be... So it's not the sneak. Mm. So it's only 8 points of damage. It was damage, yeah. Sure. 
on the turn. That's steel venom. Person. So yeah, it's it still has to do the saving throw. Oh. So that's a con save. Uh, let me check. Con save. Which is one of her good saves, by the way. No, she failed. <laughs> that's 12 more points. And is she poisoned now? Is up there. Uh, yep, become yeah. poisoned for one minute. Holy shit. That's bad. Um, so she is, let me check, is that poisoned? No, that's not. Um, I believe that's disadvantage on attacks. Yeah, it's disadvantage on anything, on everything, I think. Um, but I'm Attack rolls on ability checks. Yep. That's good to know, because I yeah. finished my, my, my phrase saying, you get the horns. And I'm using <laughs> hammering horns to her. Okay, sure. Immediately so, after you hit with a, a crit use your bonus, bonus action. Yeah, sure. And she must success a strength saving throw, or be pushed yeah. ten feet. Holy shit! So that was DC fourteen. Yeah. 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 Let me check about strength. poison. It's only attack rolls and ability checks, so she, she's yeah. okay with this. It's normal. Otherwise, it would have been with disadvantage. Mm -hmm. Strength check? Yep. Strength and save. Save, strength it save it throw. throw. Mm -hmm. DC, 14. DC 14. Holy shit. No way. With a plus nine, she rolled a three. <laughs> what? So She's weakened. Yeah. by the poison oh. and you hammer her instead and as you do she falls off hits the side of the prow of the moon chaser and goes flying down and immediately the dragon starts flying after her desperate told you uh, so that was brilliant and horrifying at the same time mm -hmm. so she's falling uh and the dragon is falling with her trying to catch her before she hits the ground jonah it's your turn now. Um, what are you going to do i w hold on sure. for, ahead, for to to finish my my turn i will yep. go up uh, 10 feet only to be close to to everyone mm -hmm. yep and that's it okay awesome so Jonah will, smoking from the lightning that went through him, sort of yep. turn around, to, just to make sure that Wormblood is fine. Yeah. Uh, and then I'll take a step to the side to break the line. Yep. And Jonah will say, "You will be burned away." And he lifts up the a hand, and light shines from his uh, symbol through his arm and up, and begins creating a creature that looks much like him, but size large, out of pure light, and holding in this giant Jonah's hand a glowing mace as I summon a celestial spirit at sixth level, <laughs> which means three of attacks at... Uh, Plus 11. It is so, large, yeah. Yep. So that's a 24 to hit. <coughs> that hits, for sure. A 20 um, to hit. That might not. That hit as well, yeah. And a 29 to hit. Those all three hit. Put, put the, You can now move this and put it whenever you want to. Uh, so this huge thingy. Yep, got it. So how much damage is that? Um, so that is 1d10 plus 9. Okay. So, sorry, that 9 has an additional 6, so that's 15 for the first hit. Okay. That's 16 for the second hit, or 31 okay. total. Yeah. And 16 for the third hit. Holy crap. Okay, sure. 52? Yeah. No, uh, so it was 31 plus 16 
47? 48. 48. 48. Yeah, 47, yeah. yeah. And now my uh, spiritual weapon. <laughs> the attacks of the celestial, like these huge angelic <laughs> creatures, start like, attacking, and the night dwarf tries to block, uh, but it's like. <laughs> And now the spiritual weapon is like on the ground, like um, knocked almost unconscious. And then your spiritual weapon, which is like a lance of light, you said, yeah? Yep. It passes through him. And that for I think 20. is for another 20 points of damage. Yep. That and true? this knight looks rough, like super bad. Mm -hmm. Like spewing blood and all of that, like not... Not, not, not looking good. From where I'm at, uh, Gerard yeah. will say, "Do you need any help, Jonan?" I do not. Good to know. Okay, and both me and the Celestial both have seven temporary hit points. Sure. Uh, and that's my turn. That would be the, the turn of the knight uh, of the uh, the skull, the one that you killed, Aldrath. And the dragon turns towards you and, and she says, What is your name, mortal? Aldrath, Windblood, Arch Knight, Aldrath, Windblood of the Order of the Knights of the Rose. Arch Knight, Aldrath, Windblood of the Knights of the Rose. You and I have unfinished business. When this is over, we will settle them. I'm going to motion the body of uh, her knight. Like, and she, she lands, okay. grabs the corpse of the knight, and she says, Although I hate you with the strength of my heart, and I will reap your sound when the time comes. You are honorable and well deserving. And she flies away from the corpse of the night. Now it is your turn. What would you like to do? I'm going to. Um, yeah, just. I'm going to just take a, a jump. Okay. I'm going to fly right at this box. And I'm going to sit with my blade ready. Awesome. And just look at Jonah like, you know what to do. Mm -hmm. Sure. He know definitely he knows what he's doing. He invoked a freaking angel into mm -hmm. the battle field, so he must be know what he's doing. So mm -hmm. yeah, that was um, now once again. Now it is the light of the lily's turn. The the dragon is flying down. They won't come back. It's like whenever, whatever, whatever happens, you know, you will have the advantage and the distance enough. To, you know, you. The moon chaser flies about eight miles an hour, um, and a dragon flies like around nine. So they'll eventually catch you up if they if they wanted to, mm -hmm. but I don't think that they're going to be able to. And then it is the knights of the knight of the road's turn, and what he's going to do is that he's considering the situation, and he's going to try to. Once again, um, let me see. What are you going to do, Knight of the Thorn? Um, um, by the way, with my action sure. that I didn't use, I'm going to use Lay of Hands on me. Awesome. Go ahead and do so. So, um, no, I, I think he's actually going to try to kill you with the last bit of his strength. Oh no, I think what he's going to do. He starts conjuring with the wand, and then he says a word, they say a word, and like, like a lot of uh, like thunder, like a huge thunder hits the ground, and everybody in a 20 foot radius is gonna hit, gonna need to do uh, a strength saving throw, so I'm gonna say 20 foot radius, so that would be, yep, that'd be you, that'd be you, that'd be you, that'd be you, yep. So, Keras, Haldra, and all of you, you need to make 
Uh, this is a um, dexterity saving throw. Dex? Oh. Dex, Dex yes. Yeah, Dex save. And DC I am 15. not within 10 feet of one nope. blood, unfortunately. I'm sorry, no. Get us That's roll right. a 21. Awesome. 20. That's good. Yep, let me check my okay. celestial. My my aura is carrying me so bad right now, and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Freaking love it. Yep. Nat 20 on the celestial, 22. Nice. Awesome. <laughs> good, very good. So all of you saved, and because you saved, uh, you're going to take 36 points, 30, 35 points of thunder damage. Yeah. You're alive, don't worry. So that's 28 open. and my hit yeah. temporary hit points. Hold, yeah. hold on, hold on. 35 with a save. Yep. With a save. Yep. It was 70 that... damage. These Knights of the Thorn are nasty. Are real, so yeah. Was that Thunderstep or was that something else? No. Once again, these are not spells, like in the traditional mm. sense of the word. These are uh, weird magical things that they do in a way. Mm -hmm. It seems like the wand was important uh, for this as well. Like the wand always turns on whenever uh, they say the words and all of that. But it seems like regular casting, but the results are way different from anything you have ever experienced before. Elena, so, question. Yep. It's an, sure. it's an spell, it's an area of effect. It's an area of effect, yeah. So evasion. you take zero. You can use evasion, yes. So that's basically zero for you? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Because he succeeded. Fucking badass. It, uh, and it's <laughs> so, a deck save, so yeah. It's a deck yep. save. Um, so awesome. Get us will do a jump. <laughs> you go ahead and move away. Like it's thunder damage. So I think it's mostly like you it's like the sound is super oh, okay. high, but you're able to move away like from the center of the explosion of the sound. Um and now he looks like super frustrated that you didn't basically die with that. Uh, and now I think it is your turn, Keras. What are you going to do? Are you sure you can do this? Or do you want any help? I, I'll do this. If you say so. But if you are... Oh, I don't know. Yes. You know, if you, if you need me, I'm be here and I'm going to uh, hold my action, an attack action, in case that this knight do something unhonorable. Sure. Jonah, it is your turn. I yeah. Don't tell me. I run your... No, no. Okay. I'm... Just trying to figure out, like, how bloody does this uh, knight look? Super bloodied, yeah. Yeah. Not That's like extra bloodied, but it's bloody, like, yeah. Looks pretty rough. I think I'm just going to do Sacred Flame. Okay. And so Dexterity save 19 and attack with my spiritual weapon. Sure. And the and angel attacks to... as well. Yeah, yeah, the angel attacks right after me with three attacks. Really good. So, Dex save, you said? For the first one? Yeah. Or for Sacred Flame, Dex? Correct, Dex 19. So Dex 19. I don't think it's going to be... No, not one. Um, They fail. So, there's the... That's the spiritual, spiritual weapon. Spiritual weapon, that's 16. Yeah. And here comes 48 from my Sacred Flame. That's... <laughs> and that's a country, isn't it? Wow. Yep, 19. <laughs> Yep. And if it's okay. still and if they're still alive, they're still alive. Yeah. Three attacks from the uh, celestial. <laughs> no, no, but I think you need the damage from your from the oh uh, the spiritual it weapon. Has, what it the has damage? the forty-eight. Yeah. What is the damage of the spiritual 19 weapon? Nineteen sacred flame. Spiritual weapon was sixteen total. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. How do you want to do this? He's exactly I, thirty-five. Yeah. Which is what they had left. I think this time I do the full effect of the spear. The one that he was able to block with shield before. Sure. The spear pierces through, and then there's a burst of light coming through the the, the sacred, the spiritual weapon that burns through his the body. 
And I guess the, the Celestial the, picks up the body and just hands it to the dragon. Like, take it. The dragon receives it, like nods, doesn't say anything. And they fly away following the other dragon that is actually carrying the body of the Knight of the, of the Skull. <laughs> and I think Sorry. that super badass situation is going to be the end of our combat. Mm-hmm. And I think as well, the end of our session. Uh, before that, Elena, so, before yep. that, um, I want to know, can I do very sneakily, um, because that night dead in front of me, uh, take a soul trinket. What, what I, is the soul trinket in, in, in when, I, he posted uh, when, it, yeah. when someone dies uh, near him? Yeah. Yep. He can materialize a token of the departed that can take whatever form uh, he wants, and he can use it in, for his abilities. Yeah, it isn't like you grab their soul or anything. Yeah, as no. you know, no. A, a string no, no, no. Okay, maybe a, then that case, yes, yeah, sure. Maybe a fraction of that, a, a sliver of its life essence that take physical form. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. You get. Ah. Uh, Actually, I'm going to give you the wand. Okay. I was going to ask about that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you have the wand. Um, and you get like a mini wand if mm-hmm. you want to like the representation of this. But you get the wand. The wand stays there. Uh, the creature flies away. And I'll say that um, as you do so, you, you keep on going, flying away, running towards your destiny. And welcome to level 12. What? Everybody. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> level up. Mm-hmm. That was fast. We said that we were going Listen, to level. We, we, we spent to... a long time on level 11, okay? <laughs> yeah. It was like a, a couple of yeah, weeks. We we had like three, four adventures at level 11 before that. <laughs> yeah. And then we had a long downtime. Now we're level yep. up. <laughs> And then you did this. Amazing. 11. Wow. Welcome, welcome to level 12. Uh, 12th level for everybody. Oh, that was a that was a session. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Very great. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody at home. Really good. I hope you had a great time. As we, I think I'm gonna speak for all as we all did. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Definitely. Do you want more of this? Couple of weeks is gonna be here. Another video mm-hmm. with our next session. Uh, as these brave heroes uh, travel through the skies towards God's home. And trying to speak with the gods. Look at that. Ah, that, that sounds <laughs> awesome, doesn't it? Yeah. Sounds mm-hmm. awesome. Okay. Good night, everybody. Thanks a lot for coming. As always, like, share, subscribe. If you like this, share it with someone that may like it as well. Yeah. We would love to have more people seeing our stuff. And we put a lot of effort into it, as you can see, I hope. Um, and we'll see you next time. <laughs> see you, everyone. Goodbye. Bye.